Hi everyone, this is Juliana Avdeva here. I was so happy to see so many of you during our live stream where we were discussing the Bartok piano sonata and the D-sharp minor, yes, the one with lots of sharps, prelude and fugue from book two of Well-Tempered Clavier by Johann Sebastian Bach. The reason I'm recording this message is that I was not very happy with the sound quality of the live stream while I was performing for you. The technical and the sound issues remain beyond my control during the live stream if I want to continue to interact with you live from wherever I am without the comfort of studio. So for this reason I have decided to reduce our conversation about Bartok just to a few highlights. And I also sat down and record the D-sharp minor prelude and few one more time so that you can all enjoy it in the good sound quality. The rest of our conversation remains the way it was. Thank you so much for participating at our live streams and please be sure that I'm always reading your comments on YouTube, Instagram and Facebook and thank you for the inspiration which you also share with me. So have a good time, take care and see you next Thursday. Bye-bye. To Europe and I'm very happy to say hello. Hope that you're all doing well and um, yeah, that you're all safe, healthy and with a good spirit. So tonight in this video, we will be talking about the, the prelude with the most. I, I assume that, well, well, the C sharp major still, but the D sharp minor prelude and fugue is a very black uh, key with many sharps. So this is the, the set we are going um, to discover tonight. And as well, I'm very happy, very excited to share some thoughts on the Bartok Piano Sonata. And um, yeah, it's um, it has been very, actually, I was very, very happy that um, I think that was Andreas on Facebook who immediately recognized actually uh, why I am, well, what, what was my association between the, this particular pair of Prelude and Fugue and the Bartok Sonata because Andreas was saying the beginning of the second movement sounds similar. What an interesting connection. Bartok edited the Wall Tempered Clavier and knew it very well. That This is absolutely, I'm very happy that um, uh, Andreas did uh, see my association with, uh, with the Bartok Piano Sonata. Of course, it is indeed, first of all, the second movement but we will come closer to that a little bit later. Um, well, first of all, I would like to say hello. Uh, so so nice to see you all. Hi, Jov. Hi to uh, hi Marcus. Hi Marek. Jakub. Hello. Hi to Japan. Topol. Maria. Hello. Dobry vichur. Al Alexis. Hello. Jamie. Very nice to see you. Francesco. Jerome. So. Amy and Royal Purple Elysio. Hello all. Thank you for joining tonight. So, um, yeah, somehow Bartok, as I was thinking about the Bartok Sonata, of course, the um, this basically this period of uh, beginning of 20th century, it was so rich on different, uh, different um, developments of the art, of course, and Somehow it is um, absolutely amazing still also to hear we were talking at our last last uh, week in the last stream we were talking about basic connection between all art form last last time it was the discussion was more about the books but um, somehow uh, of course this particular period the beginning of 20th century for me personally is very much uh, well, for me, the biggest inspiration is probably indeed the painting. And of course, um, because the connection between the particular uh, com composers and the painters and the basically artists, uh, they knew each other quite well and they were exchanging regularly. So it is indeed an amazing, uh, must have been a wonderful, very uh, exciting Time that would be actually great to know how to be in Paris, and I don't know in 1920s or 
1910, but Munich is also okay because Munich is the place where uh, Vasily Kandinsky was living for, uh, for for a couple of years, and of course, um, here I'm very happy that uh, the city still is, of course, very proud of him and there are many exhibitions regular exhibitions which you can visit and uh, somehow his his spirit here is in the air hello frank to washington say hello yusiuki hello makiko martian hello so the the this um i th th that was my actually i was very curious to to hear your th connections with the particular Kandinsky and Chagall paintings, which uh, I have posted earlier, and I was so excited to see how many, the variety of your answers, the variety of the imagination, because look, well, we have really absolute wonderful, uh, very different um, uh, answers. Uh, for instance, Baxolon is saying Schoenberg and Berg are the composers uh, uh, who are associated associated with this uh, this style of paintings. And Andy Wilson is saying Debussy. David is saying Prokofiev, Ravel. Uh, Bibi Swiss is saying Stravinsky and Hachaturian. Hachaturian is indeed a very good choice, I think. Um, Johannes was saying, suggesting Rachmaninoff. Milos uh, was talking about Ravel. Francesco mentioned Albeniz, which is, of course, also absolutely um, exciting. The, the, I completely, uh, completely um, understand. Uh, Ber Piano was saying Jose Pablo Mancayo, Mexican author. Uh, yes, it is indeed. It's absolutely. I think there is no, it's not connected to just one somehow particular. It's again, this is this global um, exchange between the artists, which uh, also made this influence between the art art forms. Carla was saying Shimanovsky. Uh, Philip was suggesting Gustav Mahler. Um, Ike said Gershwin and Radames Gnatali, which Gershwin is, of I admire this this um this idea somehow it's um it's absolutely right fernando said villa lobos um gustavo said shostakovich prokofiev stravinsky and bartok emmanuel was saying the fire so it's absolutely um the really the variety of the ideas of the inspiration is so great. Uh, Piano Alpha was saying Bernstein and Gershwin, which is, of course, also um, absolutely truth, I think. <laughs> one, one question, uh, one answer from Ayeko I really admired. Honestly, Duke Ellington. Of course, it's, uh, uh, it is indeed, um, yeah, that was this how can I say this this powerful entry to the to the twentieth century to this to the um, of course in the beginning well let's say before the second of course the first uh, world war was a big um, it, it it brought a big change also in the art in the art forms and of course the second. Uh, World War was, was also a very essential, crucial point that, because after somehow still it's in a, in my feeling you 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 in the art you have you feel this difference uh, indeed the, before the first World War and this extremely effective period between the wars and of course after the Second World. Uh, war, so this uh, I was really so happy to to just to, to observe your thoughts about that. Uh, some of you uh, mentioned Prokofiev, uh, which of course um, I also 
uh, absolutely understand and agree, Stravinsky. Uh, Marie was saying, uh, when I think of that time, I, I relate it to the music of Prokofiev due to the war and political events that arose at that time, First World War, Soviet Union and Great Depression. His music reflects the turbulent times that we lived at that time. Annelies is saying, uh, I often think of Ravel and Prokofiev, especially when I hear Prokofiev associate him with bright colors and sounds. And of course, uh, I have it here one more time. This is indeed so colorful. This so has so much energy, these Kandinsky paintings. Um, for me, it was very... Ah, by the way, Annelies said that she was currently practicing Scarbo and um, I wish, Annelies, I wish you all the best of luck with Scarbo. It's a wonderful, amazing, amazing piece and indeed is also uh, was composed or created in this uh, very, very, very vivid uh, period of time. Um, so, coming a, a little bit uh, more to Kandinsky, uh, I, I think uh, the last stream uh, uh, about the books, that was not the last one where we will be still mentioning some uh, interesting reading. Well, for me, it was actually absolutely exciting to read this book because Kandinsky was not actually, was not only a um, painter, but uh, he was also a kind of art theorist. So he had also uh, several, um, he, he left some uh, writings about uh, the art theory, basically, and uh, he was actually an absolutely uh, a, a great admirer also of music. Music was a great source of inspiration for him. And he actually once mentioned music is an ultimate, al ultimate teacher. And in this book, uh, it's called Concerning the Spiritual in Art. Uh, he himself describes his idea of, um, of the meaning of the art. Um, for instance, he compares the spiritual life of humanity to a pyramid or triangle. The artist has a mission to lead others to the top of this pyramid with his work and the point of the pyramid is those few great artists and they move the society let's say they um, establish the future so it is a very uh, interesting book because here he also explains uh, his own feeling about uh, the, connect the, the form because the form was one of the most um, important um, methods for him or element for him uh, also connection between particular colors or the uh, which emotion particular color evoke in, in in human beings and sometimes he even even um, it has a, a clear connection uh, for the color which in music instrument is uh, for him somehow associated with this particular color for instance uh, that, that I like very yellow is the color of middle C on a brassy trumpet so this I have this book in in German but this is absolutely wonderful piece of um, really wonderful piece of um, brain food I would say there is also another great book which I also enjoyed very much by him by Kandinsky which is called essay about art and artists and there is also a wonderful um wonderful uh, capture about sorry chapter of course chapter about the um picture on at, at an exhibition because he made a really amazing stage design for a performance of pictures uh which is illustrating somehow the his synesthetic concept uh, of the universal correspondence between the form, uh, music, color. So this is somehow the essence of um, I, what, what I have 
uh, received in my uh, in uh, after reading this book. So it's indeed um, I some I always come back to this to these books because they are really very very um, exciting. So um, Bartok Sonata. Bartok Sonata, well, uh, Bella Bartok is, of course, I don't know, it's very, somehow he's a, he, his role in the music history is absolutely, is really unique. Um, he was one of the first artists who also uh, really, uh, who was collecting the original folk songs music of Hungarian music and Transylvania Romanian, uh, Romanian music. And he has been an amazing pianist himself, a great performer, and uh, well, had many concerts uh, in Europe and also in the United States in the 20s. And in 1926, this is so-called piano year in his work, because this is the year where he composed several pieces, or let's say, uh, very important pieces for piano, which is the first piano concerto. Uh, the cycle outdoors and the um, piano sonata, and apparently in the uh, in, in 1926, um, Igor Stravinsky was performing in Budapest um, his concerto for piano and wind instruments, and it it must have made a huge impression on um, Bartok and. Well, to be to be honest, I I think that uh, also in this time, the the, com the, the, the all those composers, I mean like Prokofiev, Stravinsky, Bartok, even if they are somehow maybe uh, the the expressive uh, way is still very individual. It's very. Um, why I'm saying this because some 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 sometimes it's especially in the in the um, uh, in the sonata or also in the second the second piano concerto for me was actually an absolute absolutely amazing uh, amazing uh, piece to learn because I think that the composers also they communicated with each other through their music so um, in the second piano concerto uh, by Bartok. Uh, the first movement is indeed uh, the movement without um, without the string orchestra. So it's only wind instruments playing. And in a way, I I feel like maybe Bardock was was saying hello through his music uh, to Stravinsky. So uh, of course, what is in common? Uh, well, I think basically that was also the moment of the time that the composers were much more uh, looking also for the traditional. Uh, folks music from their their country. Stravinsky was using a lot, uh, especially in pieces like Petrushka, of course, uh, a lot. Um, some some. He was using the um, folks songs da dances, and this is also the case in the um, uh, Bartok sonata. But we also, as we were talking about Debussy, you might remember we also discovered that uh, Debussy also uh, did sometimes uh, employ the uh, French songs into his music, but also uh, uh, Bartok, actually uh, actually Prokofiev, because Prokofiev was never quoting the original, that was also his rivality with uh, Stravinsky, because Prokofiev was against quoting anything uh, from the existing music. So uh, Bartok is all, this is actually also a great, moment in uh, in from starting from this period in his uh, piano music it's uh, it is inspired by folk music but it's not uh, a real quote so uh, the for me this this sonata is it has so much power it has so much energy so much colors and um well, it's written, actually, the first movement is written in a very classical sonata form with several, several 
themes or several um, elements and um, what is coming to the, to, 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 to the mind immediately is of course this ostinato, very energetic rhythm um, which suggests also maybe a kind of this toccata uh, mechanical like maybe a little bit mechanical like mood and here the, there is let's say a key E which is the main key of, of the entire sonata uh, so it is all around this uh, uh, the key E and there are many smaller motifs which he develops uh, there are um, also contrasting um, themes or elements, but well, I, I would like just to give you some, some thoughts about, about this absolute ma masterpiece, which I very, very much um, admire. So it starts with the first, with this first very, very energetic motif, which is Actually, it's very often here in this sonata that uh, there are three or two, three notes, motives, which uh, Bartok then uh, uh, varies or develops. So it starts like this. I hear it. It can be can be seen as a choir, peasant choir, or also, of course, some wind instruments, some clarinet, bassoon. It's archaic because it's uh, doubled octaves, and this then we have some trumpets. And then we have just bassoons. So it is indeed different um, sound which we have. Also, although the material is similar. <laughs> also this ta -ta -tam, ta -ta -tam, ta -ta -tam, maybe piccolo. So it is full of orchestral effects. Now I come to my maybe absolutely favorite part because for me this I see this visually. It is a um, now that the galaxy is getting wider after the big bang. So I for me it's space. I see somehow indeed this so full of um, it's not easy for me to put it in words because it has such a strong impression, such a strong message. Um, but at the same time, somehow maybe it sort of describes the world in a very this very abstract manner. But for the, at the same time, very very real for me. Well, just amazing movement, love it. So the last movement is. Um, absolute brilliant um, wonderful music actually also so this uh, the first it's it's composed more of a, a kind of rondo so rondo form with some variations and here because it consists of so many also different episodes I come immediately this this picture comes immediately to my, my mind because I mean or basically this style because we have we have many elements which are still they are so they have some form they have connections they have um, they are connected with each other we have this amazing cluster so you see we have here so many notes I think we have seven notes in the right hand well this is Great, great fun. This is the real explosion of color, sounds. Um, so indeed, I think this is very good description also what, uh, of this piece. This is how well, one of the descriptions of these pieces. 
So this is um, that was my thoughts. That were my thoughts on the Bartok. So another piece which I didn't play since many many. I think over a decade I didn't touch it, but thanks to the Bach set, which will be uh, uh, playing now, of course, uh, this uh, I was very happy to think about it and to share it with you. So the D sharp minor is the one with many sharps. I all this already mentioned, so this looks really well. What is happening today? I don't know. Well, uh, you see, we have many, many sharps, and uh, apparently, same like uh, with other big sharp numbers uh, by Bach. Apparently, this set was also originally composed in the D minor, and then later on uh, he moved it uh, to D sharp. Um, the prelude is. Um, kind of two-part invention with um, maybe in a kind of Alman um, style, so with a very um, clear still dancing character. I think that in this period it's difficult to find the right tempo because we have this uh, the, the, we have this 30 second or uh, 30 second notes uh, which suggest that the tempo cannot be too fast, but if I play too slow, if I, if I, well, if it, it should not be played. Uh, I try not to play it too slow because then it becomes a little bit heavy. But it, it's still it's um, well, it's not not an easy to choice of tempo here. I well, for, for me, the fugue is amazing. The fugue is absolute master, another masterpiece. It's in four parts with a very lamenting subject starting with the repeating of the d-sharp um, and then it somehow again it's very it's a very feels like a heavy way you know up to the on the mountain the hill yeah very tra lamenting tragic tragic and um, long way which Bach uh, goes here and takes us with him on this way and um, there are no str it's actually it's a wonderful um, uh, contrapuntal piece but uh, the I think that's very original here because there are no strati no uh, any other uh, typical uh, contrapuntal devices except in the very end uh, in the last uh, two bars no uh, four, well, four bars he takes it's a kind of coda and there, uh, that's the only time when Bach uses the strato and he, t he takes po uh, the uh, soprano and the tenor voice at the same time uh, and the tenor is uh, playing in inversion, which is a very uh, rare case that the, the subject anyway appears at the same time, not like stra strato is that normally like stepping, uh, stepping stepping on the feet of the first entrance of the subject and here they play absolutely synchronical uh, together um, so this is uh, probably also already another um, step, uh, yeah, step in Bach's idea also of creating the fugues that there is a coda and this coda this this is the most intensive point that uh, two voices play synchronically uh, the one with inversions so the D sharp minor prelude and fugue from book two.
he sharp prelude and fugue from book two yes this is somehow very very deep one somehow which um moves me a lot especially the fugue and this of course this major chord this relief in the end after this long long way difficult way but it is um this light in the end this is amazing so this was probably well i'm, I'm not i'm i'm just I, I will just stop counting the sharps somehow <laughs> tonight it's not um not working but however um it was a great pleasure to have you all here tonight uh thanks a lot for joining please subscribe my channel and i'm looking forward to greeting you next week as usual thursday um and yeah we will move on to the e major prelude and fugue and discuss maybe also some new ideas who knows well stay well have a good week and thanks a lot for being here take care see you bye